My name is Erica and I help Nomadic Matt run his community events arm, which is called the Nomadic Network, which is this. Um, this started a little bit, well, it started at the end of 2019 and it was put together basically to gather travel lovers into different spaces so that they could meet each other and learn from each other so they could travel cheaper, better, longer, and more. And obviously, we started at the end of 2019, and we did all of these events in person all over the country and the world. And then when the world shut down, we pivoted into virtual events, which turned out to be a pretty great thing because we were actually able to have speakers from all over the country and all over the world talk to people wherever they were. So we were able to bring a lot more value to travelers that were based all over, which turned out to be pretty great. Um, a few things to keep in mind, please turn your camera on. Like this is a community event. We love to see your faces if you can, if you're able, um, but you will be muted throughout the presentation. Uh, I also think this is going to be an intimate event today. So after, after the presentation, I would love for you guys to ask your questions out loud. So we'll go ahead and let people unmute themselves at the end so it can be more of a discussion. Um, that's always helpful and fun. And then you're, you're more than welcome to use the chat function throughout the presentations. If Adrian says something and you have a question about it, or you want to share a relevant experience, or you want to connect with somebody that said something in the chat, go ahead. That, that is what it's there for. You can type the word question in front of your question. So it's easier for us to pick out at the end during the Q&A if you want. And then I would love to just share that all of our speakers, including Adrian, are doing this out of the kindness of their heart and their passion for sharing their knowledge with you. And for that, we are super grateful. And we ask that you, you know, engage with them, follow them. You know, Adrian has an incredible YouTube channel. So if you want to subscribe to her YouTube channel, that would be amazing. Uh, there, we bring you these speakers to be resources for you now and in the future. So we are here to learn, satiate your wanderlust and have fun. I would also like to invite you to do two different pages. One is for replays. We'd love to invite you to Nomadic Map Plus. That is our membership community. So you can find all the replays, past, present, future, will be at nomadicmat.com slash NM plus. We also do a lot of other things like tomorrow, I believe, we're giving away a free domestic flight to one of our members. So it's a really cool program to be in. And then also we'd love for you to follow us on Instagram. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen and I would love to just introduce a little personal introduction to Miss Adrian today. Um, I met Adrian not too long ago, a few months ago. Uh, we were at another TNN speaker's birthday party Justa, who came and spoke about Tanzania many, many months ago, probably at the beginning of the pandemic. And when we sat down to, next to Adrian, uh, she started sharing about what she did. And I was like, oh my gosh, you have to come talk to our network of travelers. She is all about helping anyone from the diaspora go to Ghana to live. And I think that is such a cool mission in life. And we, my husband and I, we were just sitting there talking to her pretty much the whole time about what she did and how cool her life was. And so I had to invite her to come speak to you guys at the Nomadic Network, because I think that it's just such a cool, such a cool mission and such a cool thing that she's bringing into the world. So thank you so much for being here, Adrian. I'll let you introduce yourself further. And I will be moving the slides, but I'll be muted. So Adrian, you could take it away. Okay, thank you very much for joining. Uh, my name is Adrian Cook. Presently, I'm a, a clinical social worker um, and I'm doing the YouTube channel to Ghana to travel. And so this is moving to Ghana, Ghana, Africa, why moving here is a smart plan. And it's part of my plan to retire soon to Ghana. So I wanna share this with everybody. 
I'm not uh, uh, an expert on Ghana, but so what I'm sharing with you tonight is my experience in trying to uh, relocate to Ghana and what I've learned over the years. So uh, as I say, I'm a clinical social worker who has traveled to Ghana as well as other African countries. And by next year, I should be living in Ghana. I'm a former travel consultant who worked for Midway Airlines, Kunat Cruise Line and American Express in the travel division. I also work for the government of Yugoslavia doing tours to Eastern Europe for Yugo Tours. And I first traveled to Africa while I worked for Midway Airlines. My first African country was Senegal. And that was uh, in 1994, it was my first time I traveled to Ghana after graduating from Columbia University School of Social Work. I have traveled to Ghana and other Africa, uh, African countries ever since. Next, <laughs> I currently run a YouTube channel, Returnee Sankofa, and this channel helps people move to Ghana by showing videos on how to move, opportunities to purchase land and houses, where to shop for groceries, household goods, and clothes. We also interview returnees to share their experiences of how they moved to Ghana. Next. So Sankofa is an African word from the Akan tribe in Ghana. The literal, trans, literal translation of the word and symbol is, is it is not taboo to fetch what is at risk of being left behind. So we say in order to go forward, you need to look back. So returnees, this is taken from my YouTube page, is a person who returns to a place after a long absence. So Africans from the diaspora who are descendants from our ancestors who were taken away forcefully are returning back to Africa after 400 years. In 2019, over 788,000 Africans from the diaspora visited Ghana. This was after, the, this was after an invitation from President Nana Akufu Addo, current president of Ghana, lodged a campaign to invite them to return to Ghana for the 400 anniversary to mark the 400th anniversary of the beginning of slavery that began in August 1619. So I'm telling the story of returnees by recording activities, individuals returning, organizations, and the lives of the after events. Next. So uh, the president of Ghana invited African Americans to come home. Um, Ghana considered a gateway of the brutal slave trade to the United States that began more than 400 years ago, urged unwanted Americans of African heritage to resettle within its borders in the wake of police killing of Minnesota resident George Floyd. During a memorial and reef laying ceremony in the honor of Floyd, Ghana's, Ghana's Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Bob, Barbara Otengasi, invited African Americans to resettle in Ghana if they felt unwanted in the United States. Next. <laughs> so why 2019 was a year of return? It was formally launched by the president, Nana Akufu Addo, in September 2018 in Washington, D.C., as a program for Africans in the diaspora to unite with Africans. The year 2019 is symbolic as it commemorates 400 years since the first enslaved Africans touched down in Jamestown in the English colony of Virginia in America. So I have to say in 2018, the Ghana Tourist Authority came to New York. I don't know if they went any other place, but they came and they spoke to African-Americans to invite them to come and visit Ghana, um, their you know, home. And I found a little bit later, as I had just previously said, it also invited people to come and live. So I was just excited about, you know, him coming and them coming and inviting us to come over as tourists. So I didn't expect anybody would move there. So next. <laughs> so what is the modern African diaspora? The modern African diaspora at its core consists of millions of people of African descent living in various societies who are united by a past based significantly, but not exclusively upon racial oppression and the struggles against it and who, despite the cultural variations and political and other divisions. Next. 
So my experience with Ghana was in 1979 when I read an Essence Magazine article on obtaining pen pals. So I actually signed up for three pen pals. One was in the Caribbean, one was in Algeria, and one was in Ghana. Uh, the one in Algeria answered me and said she was too busy with school and would I please talk to her cousin. So I connected with the cousin who never connected with me. And the one in the Caribbean never ever contacted me. And then the other was my pen pal of Ghana who were still friends after 40 years, little friends and our children are friends also. So this is a couple of pictures of me in 1984 after I graduated from uh, Columbia University School of Social Work. Should actually be 1994. And this first picture here uh, that you see is in Adi Braca, and the other one there is of uh, Kwame Nkrumah's uh, memorial. Um, so he's actually buried in there. So that was my first introduction was in Adi Braca. So uh, again, I had been going back and forth and staying with friends over the years, sometimes once or sometimes twice a year, uh, staying in a bed and breakfast as well. And so I decided in uh, 2013 that I would rent a house. And this is not the actual house, but I rented the house for one year. And um, after I rented this house, I decided I would either buy one or build one. This was the beginning of my decision to move to Ghana. As it became extremely difficult to travel to Ghana, the flight to Ghana is 10 hours over and 11 hours back. Plus I was working and only could get four weeks vacation. So sometimes I thought maybe I'd do a weekend, a long weekend, but that would be absolutely tiring. So then I said, you know what, I'm gonna buy a house and therefore I can go when I want. You can leave some clothes there. I even had a car and it turned out to be a good idea but not such a great idea due to the time thing. Um, one time I went, I had some business to take care in Accra. I did that and I got in my car and I went to a beach community and stayed there and that was great. And then I came back, did some more work. And then I went again out for a weekend. And those are the kind of things you can do if you don't want to move there, but you want to stay maybe six months out of a year or you do want to move there, you can go many places over there just for the weekend. There's a lot of historical sites and beaches to enjoy yourself. So moving to Ghana should start as an idea. So you need to ask yourself why you would want to move to Ghana. I mean, did you go to a film festival, African film festival, to an African restaurant? Did you meet some nice Ghanaians and you decide you might want to move? So here are some good reasons to move to Ghana. They're my, one of my reasons. Ghana has some of the most friendliest people. They're kind and helpful. That's what got me going back and forth to Ghana was the people, very, very nice. Uh, there's a lot of culture and history, lots. It's a stable country. Um, I, they've had coups, but they haven't had coups, coups in many, many years. Um, English is the language. I'm here from New York, so I didn't have to go and learn the language. So it's easy to speak to people. English is about the same. Some of the words are about the same in the meanings. It's hot all year long. Sometimes certain seasons are not as hot as others, but that's nice. If you just want to come over for six months and get away from snowstorms here, you can come over and enjoy yourself. It's a safe country with little crime, and it still has some affordable homes for sale. They've been building houses left and right in Ghana and a new apartment buildings and they're beautiful. So uh, they're still, the prices are going up on the real estate, but they're still a very affordable. I just saw someone the other day said they had a four bedroom house, or was it three for 35,000, 50,000 for a house, four bedroom. So it's those kind of things. Land is still affordable, but the prices are going up as well. Um, I think to avoid culture shock, you need to have a move-in plan. To make sure you want to move to Ghana, you should visit first, whether it's on a tour or you have some friends that invite you over. Um, Ghana has a different way of living. That's why we move, right? We want something different. I suggest you take a trip to pick a place to live, visit other regions. People tend to come and stay in Accra and there's so much to see in Ghana. Ghana is a beautiful country. You come, you stay a few months, if you can, three to six months, and then you travel around to the other regions and you see where you might want to live. 
So again, culture shock. So culture shock, the feeling of disorientation experienced by someone who is suddenly subjected to an unfamiliar culture, way of life, or set of attitudes. And I suggest that's why you go ahead of time, because if you don't, you wake up in the morning, you're going to hear different language, different sounds, different smells. You might hear chickens. You might hear all kinds of things. Ghanaians get up early in the morning. I'm talking like five o'clock in the morning. And at six o'clock, they are literally at work or on the way to work and they're making noise. You would have thought you overslept and it was 10 o'clock and you look and it's six o'clock and they don't understand why you're still in bed, okay? So this is uh, jollof rice. You're gonna see that all over Ghana and West Africa. Um, and so I just want to prepare you for the type of foods that's a regular staple that you will eat. Here in the United States, we have a similar dish called jambalaya. And I believe it's supposed to be a leftover from when the African slaves had come over. So it's basically rice, rice, and you can add different things, vegetables, different meats, seafood, or whatever you like. And in New York, I have to talk about New York because that's where I live. We have many Ghanaian restaurants in the Bronx. And I think in Manhattan, we have one in Washington, DC, in the Maryland area, there's quite a few. So it's a good idea to start off by going to a Ghanaian restaurant and giving it a try before you literally go to Ghana. The next thing is fufu, and that's the starch that's in the bowl. And that is also something they eat on a regular basis. They eat it for lunch and dinner. And I was told they also eat it for breakfast. Fufu, believe it or not, is a leftover also of slavery that's eating all over the world, wherever Africans are. In Cuba, they still eat fufu after all 500 years, and they call it fufu. They didn't develop a new name for it. It's still fufu in Cuba. In Guyana, it's called fufu, and I'm not sure how much they eat of it, but I have a friend, she's in her 80s. And she asked me, what kind of food do they eat over there? And I said, well, one of the main foods is fufu. She says, fufu? I can't stand fufu. Me and my brother, when we were kids, we had to uh, make the fufu in the mortar and pestle. I will never eat fufu again. So that is something that's eaten in Guyana. And then the Dominican Republic is eaten, but it's given the name mamfongo. And mamfongo, they mix it in with different foods. And you'll see it as a different color but it's still fufu. So I threw the shea nuts in here. Everybody now knows about shea butter and they cook with the shea butter oil as well. So I threw that in. So it's, also, it's beneficial for the body inside and out. And I have to say, I was like one of the first persons to use shea butter in the United States. I started using it in the early eighties. That's because I had a friend from Senegal that brought me the shea butter. And in, in Senegal, um, they, they call it the kareti uh, nut or from the kareti tree and it's bur kareti. And they gave it to me in a paper bag and it had twigs and, and tree limbs in it. So I would just go in with a butter knife and cut off the amount that I needed. And then I try to offer that to some friends and family and you know tell them the benefits of it. And they were like, you're a weird person. But here we are right now. This is a big business here in the United States. This stuff is in everything except for the toothpaste, uh, right? So, so I suggest that you do research before leaving. Prior to leaving, eat at a Ghanaian restaurant or at a friend's house that's Ghanaian. Participate in the African Film Festival. And I do, in New York, there's two of them. I think there's one out in um, Oregon someplace. And I do believe they've had Ghanaian films in there. Read a Ghanaian book. Um, there's some great authors and great stories. You learn about the culture. Attend an African parade. And I say this because in Harlem in September, they usually have African parades with all the different countries there. And I guess with COVID-19, we don't know when that will ever start up again. Uh, there's an African museum in Washington, D.C. I'm almost sure they have uh, Ghanaian um, artifacts on display. And then take a TWI class. There are TWI classes here in the United States. There was a TWI, a language class that was taught at Fordham University a few years ago. But now there's a group called the Adinka Group, and they're on Facebook, and they teach uh, TWI classes. And that the way they do it is you have the class once a week on Facebook, and then they give you a tutor 
and then you meet with your tutor on WhatsApp once a week to review and to practice. So that was pretty good. And attend a local African festival. Those are usually during the summertime and there's music, there's food, there's clothes and people. So you get to learn some more. So this guy here is Quay Corte. He has written some books. I've read a few of his books, but these are mystery books. And he's always, always solving murders. The great thing about his books, he has done a lot of research. He has different characters with you learn about the culture in there. Food is in there. You learn about villages and towns and culture. So this is a, a great book to learn about everything. A Ghana, everything about Ghana. So can you work in Ghana? So in Ghana, no foreigner shall employ or accept employment unless that person is granted a work permit or immigrant quota. Work permit or immigrant quota is an authorization granted to an employer or employee to engage in lawful and gainful employment in Ghana. The work permit or immigrant quota specifies the job title. The young people there hardly make any money. And I think they make like $240 a month or less sometimes. So we don't want to go there and take their jobs, okay? What happens if we're young and, and we haven't gone there and retired without a pension or social security or money saved, you're gonna to need to do something when you get there. So you hopefully you'll have money, you'll need it when you get there, but we cannot go and take their jobs. Usually people go over, they start businesses so that you'll have to do some research as well. Or what business can I start and how will it benefit um, how will it benefit the country and the people? So next, so can you buy land or homes? Yes, a foreigner can buy a house in Ghana. Foreigners can also purchase lands for sale in Ghana. However, land sold to foreigners are done on a 50 year leasehold basis according to the laws of Ghana. Even if the foreigner has purchased a house, they still have to pay for the land when the lease is due. So if you need information on land, and real estate, um, you can go to the internet. There's also GhanaWeb.com and YouTube. And we, in our uh, channel, YouTube channel, people come to us and ask us to list their lands and their homes, and we do that. So you'll see on our channel some home and land as well. And we try to um, make sure that the land and the homes are legitimate because there are issues around that with sometimes homes and lands being sold to many people. So we scrutinize that very tightly, make sure we're not desperate to get a house. We don't make any commissions or anything. So you, we look at some of the titles and things or we only deal with people that we know. Next. Okay, so what would it take logistically to move to Ghana? So I simply say, you must have a plan. You must have some money or some type of income. You have to be aware of fraud, everyday life, or tricky because it's all over. It's in the fabric of the, the culture there. So you have to be very careful. If planning on staying, you will need to be legal. So you need to have a residency. So I just heard a couple of weeks ago that they want you to get residency or come and apply for residency before you buy land. They don't want you to buy the land and then apply for residency. And you'll need permits to run a business. Also, I heard that anybody coming to Ghana that hasn't been vaccinated to the COVID-19, they plan on doing that with you at the airport. So my suggestion, strong suggestion, is that you get vaccinated before you leave in case something happens and you need some medical attention. Okay, can a foreigner own a business? According to Companies Code 1963, Act 179, set up by the Ghanaian government, foreigners can start and establish their business in Ghana. These laws were established by the government to boost the economy and encourage more foreign investments. They want businesses over there. So if you come and open up a business, um, you can go and see what type of businesses they're looking for and they make money from you. So they like you to come over and start a business. You can find information on the internet, YouTube, and Ghana has government websites that you can read about how to start a business. I think they even have a, a business um, booklet that you can download on how to register a business. So how to find information for you move to Ghana. So you can go to Ghana web and Ghana web, they have information on where to buy homes. 
land. They have news about Ghana. Um, there's all kinds of things, how to start businesses, cars for sale. Everything is on GhanaWeb.com. You can go to our channel and you, we can get some information. We're constantly adding stuff. Um, it's a process to try to gather information, but we're working on continually um, uploading information that you might need to move there. YouTube channel in general, so a lot of people now have information on moving to Ghana. Time Out magazines for Ghana. There's all kinds of articles about different things in Time Out. There's a essential guide to Ghana, No Worries. This is by a group of women in Ghana and they get together and sell this book and they have everything in there from plumbers to painters, the right real estate people. And they take the money from the guide and they donate it to different uh, organizations. Also, there's a new book out, Smart Ghana Repatriation. That talks about everything also. Um, and on Amazon, you can go on and put in Ghana, move into Ghana. A lot of people have written about their experiences. So there's lots of places now to get information. These are my contact information. And I think Erica has um, sent that out to everyone. So you have it, my email address, and also the YouTube channel where you can go on. If you want, you can type in a question for me or a comment or anything. Thank you. Next. I think there was some more, Erica. No more? Here we go. <laughs> so I just that you know, Ghana is well known for many things. And one of them is the Dinkra symbol which is a writing system incorporating symbols representing various concepts that is used by the Akan people of Ghana to, to mark fabric, walls, pottery, and other surfaces. And I did some a little bit of research and they said that this writing has been around for a long, long time, very long time. And they're still researching to find out how long ago this has been around. So they're saying it's more than a symbol, it's a writing system, uh, the Adinkra. Okay, the other thing they're famous for is kente cloth. We all send kente cloth, right? Kente cloth comes from a textile practice that originated in Ghana centuries ago. Weaving kente cloth is a cultural tradition of Asante, also known as Ashanti people. And these fabrics were originally used to dress kings in their court. And now everybody's wearing them. So, <laughs> all right. And these are just some pictures I wanna thank Erica and her husband for sending these over, but these are pictures of the kind and helpful and friendly people. And they're celebrating a festival here, it's Homowo Festival. And that is at one time there was a drought in Ghana and there was no food and people were had hunger issues. And so, it, when, and that was because it was no rain. So when the rain started up, they had food. And so now they pay homage to that every year by having this and sharing the food with the land and they throw that all around, they throw it on people and everything. They're very thankful. So that's it, returnees. So uh, my site is returnees Sankofa and you don't have to put the whole address in, you can put pound sign returnees Sankofa. And if there's something you like to see on it, you can contact me and we'll work on making sure that we get that for you. Thank you, Erica, for inviting me. Thank you so much, Adrian. Wow, that was a lot of information. <laughs> that was really, really helpful. Thank you. Um, pretty amazing. Love just like everything you were sharing about. Definitely agree. If you want to move to a place, you should probably visit first. Um, <laughs> and I am looking forward to it. Um, I. I don't think I mentioned this in the beginning, but my husband is Ghanaian. So my son is half Ghanaian and we're planning on spending a lot of time there in the future. His parents still live there. And so like, that's, you know, why Adrian and I were talking so much because we were like, oh my goodness, this is so perfect. We're trying to, well, not move there, but spend some time there. Um, we have a question from Iris and Patrick. Do you want to unmute yourself, Iris? Yes, sure. <laughs> so I was just curious, what's, um, what's the best time of year to visit Ghana? What's the weather like at, during the various seasons? 
Okay, I don't have the exact information, but there are some times where it's a little rainy than other times. I can tell you, I visited pretty much many months. I went in March one time and it was extremely hot. I went in September and I felt the weather was perfect during that time. So I've, I would say, I would say go in March, um, September when it's not so hot. March one time, it was just incredible. I had to go back to my room and turn the air conditioner. It was so hot. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's right above, it's right above the equator. So it's pretty much always mm -hmm. hot. <laughs> it's pretty much always hot. Um, any other questions from the community? You could go ahead and put your hand up if you want. Otherwise, I would love, to, can I share a little bit, Adrian? Yeah. Yeah, so I went to Ghana actually during the year of return. Um, and so like Adrian was saying, the president invited anyone from the diaspora to come to Ghana and to experience all the magic that the continent of Africa has, but like, you know, in his specific country. And so um, there were just so many people there. Did you say 700? 788,000. 788,000 tourists. And they didn't anticipate that. They made quite a bit of money off for that. Yeah. And there were like so many celebrations. We went to Afro Cella, which was an incredible, um, an incredible festival, sort of like Coachella uh, with many different stages and people performing and lots of different artists. And there was a huge art scene in Ghana, um, just like lots of talented people. And they're doing a lot of very uh, new kinds of art and new, like a, a lot of experimental things, which was really fun. But you know, this whole year of return was an explosion in sort of this tourism. And unfortunately, COVID hit, but I think that they were en route to just like be this very popular tourist destination after that first year because everyone was having such a great time there. Um, and I think, I think that like once you see Ghana and once you like go to Accra you're sort of like wow this is nothing like I expected I don't know what people really expect but it's it's it feels very different than what you would typically think that it might look like I don't know if that makes sense I mean even we were posting on Instagram about this event and sharing some photos and people were saying oh, like, I didn't realize that's what Ghana looks like. There are so many beaches and things like that. And it's a really beautiful country, like Adrian said, with amazing people, great food. I ate snails when I was there. That was interesting. Um, and just like a lot of color, like there's so much color everywhere you look. It's beautiful. And it's just like, a really amazing place and you can also find a lot of modern luxuries um you know lots of big houses and apartment buildings and malls and things that you would need or you know that you would think you would need if you moved somewhere so it's not completely out of you know you're not completely moving out of your comfort zone, which is why it's a cool place to move and which is why so many people are like, Ooh, how do I get there? Um, and so that's all I, that's all I really wanted to share just a little bit of my experience, but I mean, I loved it so much. We're trying to go back as much as possible. And so I would understand if other people here were just as curious. I mean, this is a little bit of an ex obscure topic um for travelers like how to move to a certain country and we still have quite a few people that showed up so i think that this is like a very interesting um spin on just instead of just traveling to a place like how can you actually move there so i really appreciate you bringing that to the right. forefront adrian yeah, and also I want to add that they now have new roads that they built recently, new highways. They call them interchange. Um, there's some contracts they sign with cars, such as Toyota and Nissan. I don't know if uh, Volkswagen was one, but now they have dealership and factories over there. So you don't have to uh, bring your car over. You can just buy a car over there. It's actually cheaper. 
and the roads have improved and they are now um, they had an issue with uh, uh, sidewalks and things. So now they've covered the sidewalks up and covered the sewers up, you know, so they're trying their best. So it's going to take a while. And I think there was a gentleman who designed Singapore because Singapore at one time was, uh, uh, what was that, a poor country in the city. And so the same person who uh, designed the city um, also is looking at helping them reform Accra. So there's gonna be some big changes coming. They have a train already that they're bringing through the city, taking people to and from. And there's supposed to be some type of sky train coming as well uh, soon. So a lot of things are starting to happen there. How exciting, how very exciting. Yeah. And I would love to know, Adrian, um, can you just tell us a little bit more about what brought you there in the first place? Like, I know you were working in the travel industry and, but you can well, go on. I think it had to do, it started out with my pen pal, you know, mm -hmm. who had invited me over. And um, I also had gone to Senegal for three weeks. And then I then flew over to Ghana for two weeks. And so it was to actually to meet him and his family. And it was time for me to go because he and I had been writing for many years and also to go to, uh, to, go to Africa. So um, I had been to Senegal in 1984 already and I went back in 1994 and I took my son with me actually. He and I went over, he has family there. So we went over and stayed with him for three weeks and then over two weeks in Ghana. So, yeah. That's awesome. And then can you also tell us a little bit about how much things cost there? I know you mentioned the houses, which seems a little crazy, a four bedroom house for 35 or $50,000. Yes, you have to but what about stuff, like, though. I'm sorry. I said, you have to go on real estate and check all the different prices. They have yeah. houses that cost the same thing as here in, in the United States or Europe. And some people are surprised at that, but then, then they have these affordable houses. So, but then what about like things, you know, like how much does okay, it? Okay, so I can talk about things. Yeah, As soda. Here, or yeah, they're about sometimes the same price, depends on what soda is. They now have a lot of American products, European products, um, and then they have Ghanaian products. So you have to pick which one you would like to drink. The prices have gone up a little bit and food prices have gone up. And just like they've gone up over here, I think they're going up all over the world, the food. So you have to be savvy and go to the market and really negotiate with the market ladies. Sometimes that can be a little tough. So a lot of people go to the supermarket and I'll tell you the name of the supermarket is ShopRite. There's several what? ShopRites, several of them in Accra alone. So it's just like going into any supermarket, they have everything and the prices might be a little less, but they're about the same. So if you're, you know, and then they have uh, fruit places that, you know, such as strawberries, maybe cantaloupes that might've been imported. Sometimes a lot of things are imported from South Africa. I think the shop right is the South Africa supermarket, but butter, one year I, bought, I wanted to buy some butter, but butter was crazy, like $8 or something like that. So thereafter I started taking butter in my suitcase and a little cooler in my suitcase and yogurt and stuff because those prices were expensive, so. That's crazy. What about things to do when you're there? Like, what are some of the tourist attractions? Well, there's a ton of tourist attractions. You have the Dubois Center. As I just said, you saw the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial. Um, they have La Labadee Beach. You can go to the beach on Sunday. Everything's at the beach, entertainers, music, horses. Uh, they have the International Art Center, which is downtown. They have art, uh, craft people selling things. Uh, they have uh, lots of beaches. I actually, you know, I don't know how many cities have a beach, right? So Accra has a beach. Uh, lots of tourist sites. I can go on and on and on with that. Uh, they have the slave dungeons that you have to drive up the coast, actually, to Cape Coast and Elmina to go to the slave uh, dungeons. Um, a lot of historical sites and basically you just have to go. <laughs> I was just showing this is a, one of the slave dungeons. They used to be called slave castles. Lots of people still call them that, but that's one of them. They're huge mm -hmm. and 
very historical and very sad to visit um right. but part of and the El history Mino, the funny thing is my favorite areas are elmina and cape coast and i like the volta region the volta region is very green but there's something about elmina and cape coast that feels very comforting like home even though the slave dungeons are there and actually the largest amount of african americans live in the elmina area so that's the interesting thing to study why we chose that area, you know. Mm -hmm. Brian, do you want to unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adrian. Thanks, Erica. I was just curious, like I, I know a lot of people travel to get to know the local culture. What time of year would you say they have a lot of traditional festivals or multiple times a year? Well, visit? all year round they have festivals. So what you have to do is they go through, you can go on online and pull up festivals of Ghana. And you go through them and you see which festivals you would like to go to. So some of them are in the, the regions and some are in Accra. You have to see which ones might be of interest to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know that since there is a, I would say that since there's a large part of the um, population living outside of Ghana, that means that during the typical holiday seasons, like a lot of people go back home to see their family right so like well, christmas they more and new go back at christmas time right christmas and new year's is like crazy which means it's gonna be lots of traffic lots of people but also like lots of things to do so you know like filled beaches and things like that which is nice right like to be around so many people so that is that's a plus and a, a minus depending on which you want <laughs> um i'm also dropping in the chat uh adrian interviewed rich and put it on her youtube channel so i just sent the link to everyone but uh that's just an aside um if there's any last questions i know your son marcus was dropping in there to say that uh I, Ada Foam is the most beautiful coast beach, coastal beach. Atafoa. Atafoa. Oh, he, he, he had an opportunity. To, uh, actually, Atafoa is where I went for one weekend that I came and stayed in Accra, and then I went there for a few days. And what that is, it's um, a body of water. They may have dammed this water up, but it's a body of water that goes all the way up to the dam. And then it flows down to the ocean. So the ocean and the water from the river meet. And you see that it's very beautiful, but actually it's a lot of currents there, and it's very dangerous where you have the ocean and the river meeting each other. But yes, it's at a phone. And that's where the president and a lot of politicians and rich and famous people have their homes also. Amazing. Yes. Anything else you'd like to share, Adrian, before we close out this well, session of TNN people here there's 18 people in chat yeah does that mean they want to ask questions or they're listening oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I mean you know if you want to ask uh anything you can contact me through the email or through returnees um so it would be great if you can give me a little support by going to the YouTube channel but I'd be glad to answer any questions to you. Yeah, amazing. Adrian, it was so amazing having you here today, just sharing what you're passionate about and helping others move to Ghana. I know moving is on a lot of people's minds, especially after this year being cooped up wherever they were. I know like a lot of people are curious about how they can live elsewhere <laughs> a lot of people are doing that for sure they're, they're being very creative uh, a lot of people have bought these vans and put tiny homes in it mm -hmm. and I just seen the other day that people are buying boats and uh, living in them all year round cruising around the world and not owning a home or you know it's a, it's a different time right now exactly people are getting creative and 
people are moving places and then they're moving to other places. So mm -hmm. just because you want to move to Ghana doesn't mean you have to stay there the rest of your life. You could yes. move there for a few months, a few years, and then move on. Yeah, um, yeah a lot of great uh, African countries and some are very, very beautiful. So like, you know, Erica's saying, you could try one and then try another one. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a beautiful time we're living in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people are questioning uh, you know whether or not they actually have to like have a set place for the rest of their life or if they could just like travel the world and maybe move and live different places mm -hmm. and so this is a very timely um session so thank you so much um before we sign off i just want to share my screen one more time because a few people said this was their first event with the nomadic network oops Hold on one second. Let me just get the right thing up there. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about how you could find other events with the Nomadic Network. So if this is your first or one of your first times, um, I would love to share where you could see other events of ours. Um, that's at thenomadicnetwork.com slash events. It's a bit of a mouthful. Um, but we host anywhere from two to six events a week. And um, a lot of them look sort of like this, where there's a presentation and then a Q&A session. Um, and they're on different topics, literally, across the board we let um we like love to have community members share about whatever they're passionate about and sometimes uh we ask special experts to come in to teach us about a certain topic like i know onika raymond came and taught us all about instagram and we all know she's an instagram queen um so those are some of our events Another kind of event that we host is a virtual happy hour. So that's where you can meet and mingle with other travelers, um, either in your region or that want to go to the same destination as you. So we've had them anywhere from like a Texas happy hour to a I want to travel to Iceland happy hour where we can all meet and basically just share how excited we are about traveling and meet other travelers that are just as excited. And then the next kind of event is actually one of them happening tomorrow. We have a monthly book club where it's a travel book club. We started it in January. And so this is our ninth one. I didn't even realize um, tomorrow with author Mark Adams. And we're talking about turn right at Machu Picchu. So we'll have Nomadic Matt there interviewing Mark Adams and then a bit of a community Q&A session afterwards. Um, that's all the first Wednesday of every month. And uh, it's usually at 12 p.m. But sometimes that changes the next month since that's tomorrow and you might not uh, have made time in your schedule the next month. Uh, we're having Lola come and speak about her brand new novel in every mirror. She's black. It's awesome and it's brand new and it's i believe out on the 7th of september so you could sign up for the wait list right now um but it's going to be amazing and then if you found this valuable we would love to invite you to nomadic our nomadic map plus community where you could get exclusive tips and advice to help you on your travels that's at nomadicmat.com slash nm plus and like i said you could get the past present and future tnn replays so if you miss any not a problem um we also have monthly giveaways tomorrow we're giving away a free domestic flight to someone just for being a part of our community um, and also you get free signed books guides never before seen photos exclusive facebook group there's access to our courses like so many perks and we're only ever adding on to them um, and then i would just love to say thank you so much for being a part of our travel community like this would not be a community without you so thank you for showing up thank you for asking questions and thank you for, for being interested in um, our events and last last but not least adrian thank you so much for coming and sharing your passion with us and sharing well, all about you. ghana and opening people's minds and hearts to a place that 
they may not have ever considered before. So thank you so much. Thank you.